do a quick video on how to actually call Microsoft Azure's AI document intelligence. Um, you've probably started to see Microsoft in a number of the Magic Quadrants. Um, I, it's not a really a full IDP solution, so I'm not sure who some of these analysts are that are recommending Microsoft above um, some other products, but really there's no interface to it. You can certainly build one through an API, but that's a lot of work. Um, so I wanted to show how you actually create an endpoint in an API key, and then actually how you can call that programmatically. Um, a lot of people uh, think that they can uh, utilize their existing user interfaces to be able to uh, broker the connection between Microsoft uh, Azure and its AI document intelligence piece and uh, batch capture type processes. The difficulty is, is really, again, there's no interface to manage all those batches and all the different things that are required for an IDP solution in a large uh, document capture type scenario. So let's get into it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is go to Azure and you're going to type in document intelligences, which you'll see here. Um, and this comes back with all the document intelligence. Um, we have obviously set up these with our particular clients. And so if we hit create here, um, this will allow us to start to create the particular uh, document intelligence and get the endpoint and uh, the actual API key. A few things here that are important. Um, one, the subscription, um, you can sign up free uh, and you'll get a default subscription. If you are and looking to do more of this, then I'd sign up for the Action Pack. Uh, Action Pack is $475 a year and you get $100 free monthly credit. So okay, well, pays for itself. Um, so Resource Group is kind of like a security class. Um, we create a security group for each one of our customers. Um, you can come in here and create a new one. Um, so I have a default one I call DIMPN, Microsoft Partner Network. Now the region is really important. Um, you're going to notice this area here, which is telling you some of the, one, the neural um, learning for custom extractors. Um, you'll see here, so custom generative extraction is only available in these particular regions. Okay, so uh, I always use East US because we're based in East. Um, but you do have West US 2, just note the difference. Um, so depending on the preview version or general availability versions, we'll provide um, guidance, give it a name. Okay, and then the pricing here is important. You never wanna use free, free is really not free because it really just doesn't work. Um, so you wanna use standard. And so right now calling the pre-built connectors is a penny a page, and now Microsoft has reduced the cost uh, for the custom to $30 per thousand, which is three cents a page down from five. When I hit next, um, I usually select um, all networks, including the internet, because um, we're consuming this through um, our, we actually host um, this product called Kodak Info Input that uh, allows us to parse this JSON. So if you're looking for a really good user interface, uh, Kodak, Alaris, Info Input's a good tool that wraps around this. Um, pretty much you don't need to do anything else. I do put in tags. Um, you can lock this down to a particular user or group set. Um, I do tags just so I can put the customer name and when I do the cost analysis, I can see who's consuming what resources. And then when I hit create, create um, right here, this will create that particular uh, Azure parser. Okay, so now um, we're gonna go to documentintelligence.ai.azure.com forward slash studio. You can access this also. Once you build a, uh, a particular parser, you're gonna see this go to document intelligence studio here. Um, otherwise you can bookmark this page and um, I've already set this up. So when I click on a pre-built model, um, you notice that it automatically loads and you'll see up here in this corner is where I had entered in my endpoint and um, API key. Uh, that's the only two things you need. So when you build a parser, you'll see there right on the home page, the overview page is this down here in this area, you just copy this endpoint and one of these keys, it doesn't matter. I always grab key two just, just for best practices. And then you enter that information right here. And now you're able to utilize any of the pre-built parsers. 
Now, the pre-built stuff, as you see here, um, you only have to do that once for all of them. So all of these pre-built models will then utilize those particular capabilities, which would be, um, or it's built to that particular resource group and um, intelligence account. Now, when you're building custom extraction models, um, you'll see here when we hit create project, you have to essentially enter all of that information in yourself. So as I said, this was a test customer um, and then continue. I have to, again, select the same things that you just saw in the other um, section within portal.azure.com. Okay, so here I'd select the subscription, I'd select the resource group, and then if there are any existing document intelligence services, you can select that, but you can create them here as well. So I can create a new resource and create the document intelligence parser here myself or utilize an existing one. Now, the, the important part here, when you continue on training sets for custom, you're gonna wanna use a different blob storage. So if I come in here and I select um, my storage account, which I'm doing now, this is what's gonna hold the training documents. Okay, so if I have customer A and B, you don't wanna have the same storage account. Um, so you'll see here, you're gonna wanna create a storage account per customer. And the reason for that is, is if you go and use the same storage account, all the samples from customer A will be in customer B's project. So you don't want that. It's important to use a different container name. Now you can use the same storage account, but use a different container name than your other, um, than your other uh, customer. I'd also say you wanna use a different um, document intelligence setup per customer as well, because the model training fields, table elements, selection marks, and signature zones will be very specific to that particular customer. Okay, so that's how you do, um, as you see here, the different types of custom, and custom is a little bit more work. I'm not gonna go too much into here, but you come over to the right, you create your different fields, as you see here, and then you drag in your documents and all these documents are stored in that blob storage account in Azure. So you don't wanna be mixing customer A with customer B samples. Same over here on your right, the document intelligence that you set up, these are the fields that it's automatically gonna extract in the model you're building. So if customer B's is different, then you want a totally different document intelligence entry. All right, so in terms of um, programmatically accessing, I'm not gonna go too in the depth here, but if you were to select any one of these pre-built and you scroll to the bottom, you're gonna see a whole bunch of these steps here and you get code samples, etc. So if we do our input requirements here, you'll notice um, just a few things, basic stuff, like what type of images can you process through this engine? All pulled out and it, there's a GitHub link. So you can come in here and one of the sample capabilities analyze with pre-built model. And so it's, it's pretty simplistic here. Um, but as you'll notice, as we come down to call, we're calling the document intelligence client, we're passing in the endpoint and we're passing in that API key. And that's all you really need. In this particular area, one of the parameters is the type of template that you're looking to capture. 12, 13 different pre-built items. So you can call them exactly how you see them. So if we come to, for instance, the W2 personal tax here, and you'll see um, from the drop down the different types of uh, forms that you can process. And so you will call those a pre-built and then what it is a hyphen, what it is, and then its context. So there are a bunch of tax forms. One of them is a W-2, so you can call that. There's plenty of um, syntax help here um, as part of this github.net project. Um, otherwise, you can utilize one of, um, so in our particular case here, we're using um, Kodak Info Input. Um, one of their capabilities is this concept of a IOCR processor. So you can see here, we're telling it we wanna use the Microsoft Azure invoice parser. So the nice part about Kodak is it makes it really easy for you to consume custom and pre-built models. As you can see here, I select the appropriate model 
Um, it does have capabilities here for some of those optional add-on functions. If you have low-res documents or dot matrix printing or very fine fonts, um, you can utilize some of these. There's do charge at, I believe, uh, 0.03 cents per page. So what we do is once we provide the extraction, um, I can actually, through a script in JavaScript here, call the JSON payload. So essentially what you get back is a, a JSON file. You upload a document, you get back a JSON file. So I can actually parse through that file with the batch API that's part of Kodak Info Input. So as you can see here, house number, I want to actually, doesn't get returned by default from the invoice parser. This number is part of a larger field called sh shipping uh, remittance or billing address. Um, so what we want to do is actually parse that piece out. And as you can see here, using the API, in this case, I can grab the shipping address dot value dot house number. So I can actually pull the house number out of the shipping address as part of the JSON payload, um, which makes it really easy to work with Azure information. And like I said, um, there's lots of analysts out there that will push Microsoft, but really there's no interface to handle the documents. So you're going to need something programmatically, whether it's a um, Visual Studio IDE interface um, or um, some, some programmatic interface to be able to manage and call those batches.